Once again, what's going on, everybody? What is up? Good Sunday evening to you as we share our weekly communion together. I got to limp it along. I had a MacBook today, returned it to Costco. So I was this close to having that MacBook. The MacBook M pre. <laughs> Marbles in the mouth already. The MacBook M3 Pro is what I was trying to say. We had it. We ordered it from Costco. And wouldn't you know it, when we got it, uh, it was coming Saturday on Veterans Day. And I got an email that veterans would get a discount of 10% at the Apple store. So... Yeah, Costco doesn't match. We found out they don't match competitors, and we ended up uh, returning it. So I ordered what ended up being an upgrade for, sorry, I just thought of our uh, favorite movie, Idiocracy with Upgrade. If you know, you know, but yeah, shout out. Who, who here has seen Idiocracy? Let me know. And by the way, we're going to get into it. All of those of you watching on replay, thank you. You know, those of you that have been along for this wonderful, fantastic voyage, we've had our issues with, with this in, in, not insignificant. I don't want to say that to you, uh, Mr. Laptop, that served me well for all these years, but it just needs to be faster. It's eight gigabytes of memory on this one. We had gotten the 14 MacBook Pro and yeah, upgrade, right? And we upgraded that to uh, now the, uh, so essentially with the savings, because with the 10% savings from Apple for the, the veteran discount on Veterans Day, we uh, we're getting the 18 gigabyte memory. So it should be plenty well for everything I do um, either way. So thank you guys for sticking around and going through this with me as we grow. We learn, we grow. You'll see me looking off to the side here because I got a 27-inch monitor too that I have mounted next to the uh, to my camera. So hey, we're, we're moving up in the world and we're learning and uh, doing things. So anyway, excited to share this one with you. And literally this morning, I went to Google something. I don't remember what it was. It's It's irrelevant. Insert whatever crazy, goofy thing you want to hear. Oh, by the way, I'm, I should introduce myself. My name is Russ for all of those uh, that are just joining and watching the replay. we I got this. I Googled and I saw this from The Motley Fool. And it was about, yeah, we'll, we'll talk idiocracy later, dudes. So here we go. I'm getting all confused here. All right. I got, I'm not used to this. I still have the... Uh, the laptop. <laughs> I'm looking at you guys. I'm looking here. I'm looking there. People are like, what's the matter with this guy? So let's do this. What we're going to share is what we first saw. Um, I first saw this. It said, here's the title. This is what caught my eye. It said <laughs> three Warren Buffett stocks with ultra high dividend yields of more than 6.4%. Actually, let me do this because we're too. We want we want to make this more easier, more, more easier for you guys to see with bad English. But uh, this is what I saw, and I was like, "What?" I'm like, "I know he doesn't own anything with 6.4 percent yield." So it got me to click, which why some of you may have clicked. But I'll show you what's going on here. Is that the? There he is, Mister. Uh, oh my God, I forget Kevin, Kevin O'Leary, right? Keith Spates, whoever he is, hey, we I understand the game. You need to get content out there. But he ended up saying, if I could preface this, that Berkshire Hathaway owns New England Asset Management. And who owns New England Asset Management? Well, New England Asset Management, right? Yeah, my fellow dividend investing listeners, was acquired by General Recorp in 1995 and then Berkshire acquired General Re in 1998 okay so here's here's where we're going with this you follow so i looked and i i thought i'd show you guys this too this is the Berkshire Hathaway annual report at the very bottom of it page 139 of 144 almost all the way at the end they list out 
everything that Berkshire owns outright. These are not the stocks. So this is everything that they own in their portfolio outright. So yeah, I forgot they own Duracell, Fruit of the Loom they own. Um, yeah, Allegheny, that's one of their newer ones. All the insurance companies, Warren loves the insurance. So this is why you can't just replicate Berkshire's marketable security holdings because you won't be able to get, where's Dairy Queen? Dairy Queen should be on here. Why don't I see it? Maybe, I don't know. It's somewhere here. Or a Dairy Queen. Yeah, Dairy Queen, right? Because they would have the Dilly Bars. I don't know. I'm not seeing it. Where Anyway, there it is. Sorry. <laughs> Service and retailing, Dairy Queen. So they do own Dairy Queen, which is kind of cool. But either way, so that, that's why Hellsberg Diamonds. You get access to all these when you own Berkshire Hathaway. So uh, that's that. And then I looked uh, under New England Asset Management. So this is a subsidiary of a subsidiary, if you follow that. So Berkshire Hathaway owns New England. No, Berkshire Hathaway owns General Re which owns New England Asset Management. And on 13F.info, they listed three stocks in the article. It was Aries Capital, uh, Golub, and um, Crown Castle, CCI. That was 6.4. So just to get you guys to click, I, I went through and uh, did Aries because it's almost 10% and Golub is 9-ish. Is but either way, look at this. So Aries Capital, this is New England Asset Management, by the way. Remember, this isn't Berkshire. This is New England Asset Management. Of their portfolio, Aries Capital is 0.6%. Uh, there are 225,900 shares. And then, well, we see CCI there. And then Golub is in G, letter G. There it is. Not General Mills, not Google. Keep you pat, there it is. Hey, congratulations. Uh, Golub Capital is 232,876 shares, 0.5%. So, dear dividend investing viewer, they do own Warren Buffett indirectly owns Golub and Aries Capital. But if you take these two numbers of Aries, which I did, Aries and uh, Golub, the amount of shares, the market value, uh, Berkshire has an enterprise value currently of, uh, uh, let me get it for you. Let's see. I had to do some computer clean. You know what? We won't because I'm not I'm not set up for that. It doesn't remember my, my login stuff, but it's one one thousandth of a percent of Berkshire's portfolio would be the subsidiaries, subsidiary holding of Aries and um, of Aries and Golub. So I ask you, do you think this is accurate? Because I'm mixed on it. I, I see what he's doing. And as he says, however, that's not the full story. Here are three high stocks that not just high dividend, but ultra high yields. You probably didn't know Buffett owns. Um, so they show Golub. And then right here, they say, you won't find this listed among Berkshire's holdings. However, the stock is in the portfolio of Berkshire's subsidiary, New England Asset Management. Buffett, therefore, owns a stake in Golub, in Aries Capital, which is right down here, which we do own. And by the way, uh, Penny Roll stepping down, stepping away as CFO, so somebody so fitting. And then Crown Castle, ticker CCI, was the third one, but the dividend yield is about 6.5%. But it didn't fit with me going with... Aries here, which is 9.79. So for all intents and purposes, we can round that up to uh, 10% Aries Capital. And then Golub is 10.03%, but they have a dividend safety score of 25 unsafe because, uh, I don't know, I didn't really look into this one. That's as far as I got. You guys can look if you want. Doesn't look, uh, it's a BDC but they have been increasing that dividend a little bit. So that's uh, that's Golub. Might be an interesting look-see for you out there. And now I'm going to jump back on with you guys. So weird. Look at Hi. <laughs> so what do you guys think? Do you guys think that uh, 
do you think that's accurate? Do you think Buffett really does own these stocks? And I don't think he would, he wouldn't buy them outright. But the thing about Berkshire, and I'll end with this telling you, don't not ending the stream, just ending the little segment here at the opening that uh, Berkshire does. Uh, what am I trying to say? They, they let the businesses that they own outright run autonomously, meaning that they let them just keep doing what they're doing. He wants them to run the business how they've been running the business. So it doesn't really micromanage them. And that's kind of Berkshire's MO. That's the thing that they do. So, so that's that. And I am going to get caught up to you guys. I'm just going to say, you know, good, good evening. Thank you all again for popping in. Whatever you want to talk about, floor is yours. Throw it out there. Questions, concerns, comments, you know, whatever. You want to look up a stock. You want to talk about something. I'm all for it. Uh, get to a few of what you guys are buying. Yeah, I love hearing what you're buying. It's a little bit of the rationale. We have Kevin, Mr. Mendoza. Thank you, sir. Buying Verizon and APD. Oh, Kevin just did a video on APD, right? I saw. I think I saw Kevin in the house. Yeah, and thanks for the, uh, yeah, the laptop. Unfortunately, I don't think I said it won't be here until November 28th. So, you know, hey. Good things come those who wait. So we're going to wait a little bit on that. And yeah, man, no problem, Pat. It was just, I was a young kid with a dream, wanted to leave Berwyn, Illinois, see something else. And Jim, dude, Idiocracy is becoming reality. One of my favorite movies. Not only is that a cult classic, but last night we watched, uh, it was on Pluto. We've been using Pluto to randomly see what's on when we can't figure something out to watch. But we watched, um, uh, Drink from the fire hose. It was UHF. Great, another great movie. Yeah, so it is. It is a cult movie, absolutely. Yeah, son, they don't get it, but we'll see. I don't think we'll still be around in twenty two to thirty five. Dude, do you really dread Monday mornings? I don't because I love it that the market's open, and we never know what's going to happen during the week. It's what makes things so interesting. Is that it's unknown. And I talked about this in the, in the podcast that I put out today is we don't know what's going to happen. The most important information for any stock is tomorrow, the future, because all the data up to right now is known. Like unless somebody's hiding it, it may not be well known, but all the numbers, all the financial statements, all the accounting, that's all known. But the most important thing is what's going to happen next. And we just don't have the data for what's going to happen next. So <laughs> yeah, what's up, man? What's up, Craig? We got to have you back on our buddy Leon. We still haven't watched an uh, the last dragon, not Enter the Dragon. I don't remember FTAI. Oh, Ryanair. You know what? That's interesting on Ryanair. I, I'm not big into the airlines, but on Quarter App, I have Dividend plugged in, but they had mentioned Dividend like 30 some odd times in their earnings call. And I never did get to look at what that was about. Uh, yeah. So what's the, what's the story with Ryanair? Are they solid? You know, it, airlines seem to me kind of like auto where it would be high, uh, capital intensive and very competitive, very competitive in that. Yeah. The thirst mutilator dude, beautiful, beautiful electrolytes. <laughs> oh yeah. I'll be fine, dude. What are we hanging in? I don't even, I don't even remember just about this laptop. It's, it's, it's not its fault. It's this guy's fault that bought the wrong thing, bought the eight gigabyte memory. And I'm trying to do all this stuff on it. So I, uh, dude, I don't have, I know they're solid. I know that Kevin, yes, the, Kevin heard his name. He did a video on APD. Yeah. I would just say, watch it, dude. I watch Kevin's video. Like when you're done with this, you know, run, don't walk to, uh, to Kevin's channel to check it out. And they have Matt, do they have massive insider buying? Interesting. Jim, I wonder, is that on, uh, that's not on CEO buys, is it? So check this out. We'll share this. Uh, we'll go in through here. Uh, let's go to, after I hide your name, Jim, Sorry, Jim. Let's go to ceobuys.com. And 
We'll go use this window to go there. By the way, 13f.info, just great stuff. I don't know if you guys uh, ever go on 13f.info. If you want to know, that's where we're looking at the holdings at. Just super simple, straightforward. Some of the most searched ones right there. You can go right to it. But uh, what were we going to again? Oh, CEO buys. <laughs> CEO buys .com. And this is a site which I don't pay for. Found a little hack. So this is where they show, they tout this as buying what CEOs buy with their own money, not restricted stock units. It's not uh, stock awards, options, grants, anything like that. But if you scroll to the bottom and you click this browse all buys, yeah, you don't get the email alerts for real time. But I always, you know, peruse this every now and then to see if there's uh any stocks in there that I notice, which I haven't looked in a few days, but uh, there you go. SoFi. So they're, I guess, CEO bought some shares, but uh, I don't see anything else. Four days, five days, all last week. Nothing. Oh, look at that. Well, lo and behold, Gesemi Sifi, I don't know his name. He bought with his own money, $2.5 million worth of APD on the open market. That is really, really interesting. And if you click here, it'll bring you to the uh, SEC disclosure uh, statement and change of beneficial ownership. And this is where they pull all the information from. So you guys can do that uh, later. Oh, uh, you didn't get to see that because I'm only sharing one screen here. But either way, uh, I don't see anything else. Five days, six days. Pets is a fun little thing. So all right, we'll just leave it there. Ah, Markel, Thomas Gaynor. Dude, he's solid. Markel doesn't pay a dividend. Uh, insurance, they're kind of like modeling themselves over Berkshire. But anyway, if you click this right here, if you click that, it'll take you to the SEC form. So very interesting. But let's go real quick. APD, where was that? Um, their CEO now has 660,110 shares. So make that a little bigger. He increased his stake by one and a half percent. Nice. That's how I read that. Cool. So that was a fun one that worked out. Yeah. Yes, Kevin. Kevin did a live stream. I was getting home from work and uh, goofy with him. I, I asked them to just go in depth into like 20 stocks right off the bat. So yeah, ARC, CCI, and GBDC. Those were those were. Top of my list is Johnson & Johnson. Still going to buy more. I've been consolidating my Selenese position into more J&J. &J. A little bit of Nexstar. By the way, they announced the deal starting in October 2024 with, uh, with WWE Next, which is like the minor leagues of uh, the WWE. Uh, so the CW... Nextstar has a 75% stake in that, and they're really trying to turn it into like a baby fox, like uh, with the live sports, uh, entertainment, things like that. So, yeah, it's real interesting. So they're going to have WWE, NASCAR Xfinity Cup, which, yes, it's a step below from what I understand. Got to start somewhere. Uh, ACC College Football, Basketball, and Live Golf. And the reason they're doing that, and, and then like KTLA is broadcasting, I think, 15 Clippers games. So they're trying to get their, their networks into more local live sports like NBA and, and things like that and MLB. Uh, just, dude, live sports, they're unscripted. Unscripted entertainment can be a little bit more exciting. You get the gambling edge in there. Just a lot of good things. A lot of more, eye, a lot of more eyeballs is going to be on the screen, so. Yeah, I, I love Nextstar Media. That's uh, that's top of my list. Some say it's a melting ice cube, but they're trying to avert that. But hey, you know what? Right, guys? Like for any business, the moat is always under attack. And it's just a matter of time before somebody finds a way across the moat into the castle to bring them down or try to bring them down. But every business is under attack. Every day from competition, trying to put them out of business. I don't care who it is, Coca-Cola, whatever. That's why it's kind of cool. Like a Berkshire is so diversified with the businesses they own. So what are you guys doing? What are you buying? What are you looking at? Anybody watching the uh, the Jets and 
Jets and Raiders. There he is. There's uh, Mr. Mr. Rydubs. What do you call him? Rydubs? Mr. Ryan Williams. Ken Kramer bought Jeppy and SCHD. I'll drink some uh, agua to that. What are these? Miguel Ramos. Hola, senor. Would I buy LVMH or Caring? Um, I don't know Caring. Louis Vuitton, right? LVMH. I've heard good things about LVMH. I haven't looked into it personally, but the chaps over at Dividend Talk have said pretty good things about it. What about you guys? Anybody in the chat know anything about it? Yep, Ryanair. I saw their planes when we were over there. Uh, has it at three strong buys. It doesn't pay a dividend, but planning starting 2024. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I love this. I love it. Yeah, five should be a 12. Well, I don't know if I... I think maybe education, he talks about college, modern monetary theory and all that. He says his twaddle. But yeah, dude, I love Charlie. Which, by the way, one a week now. I'm not cramming it in. I'm re-listening to all the Berkshire annual meetings. I finished 1996 last year, starting 97 this week. Got a little notepad on my phone or the sheets and I'm, I, don't, I might do something with it, but things I find interesting, useful or helpful. I have been just writing down as I go along. So yeah. Anyway, I think we're finishing with um, Jim with the three seek analysis, three strong buys. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't, you know, it's an interesting thing with paying a dividend. I mean, there's a lot of big name investors that, specifically don't like when a business pays a dividend because they're trying to look for businesses that are going to grow rapidly. And for every dividend that is paid, that's less money that the business has to reinvest back into the business. But obviously that shouldn't prevent any of us from investing in a stock. I mean, I look at Warren, a lot of plenty of them that they use those dividends, but it is, it's a give and take, man. It is a give and take. Uh, glad you enjoyed the 10 cheap video. <laughs> I did it as a podcast and a video. So I'm glad you enjoyed that. And I thought that was uh, what Tr started out broadcast. Oh, dude, breaking news from the past. Look at that. I didn't know that they started with tractor pulls, but you know, that's a great point. You got to start somewhere. You usually don't just go from no live sports to the NFL, right? It doesn't happen like that. So it, it's, Broadcast is on its way. No, it's it's going to be in a transition period. I don't think it's like cigarettes, which, by the way, there was an AP article I read that showed that teen vaping is down substantially. I think uh, it's down from 14% to 10% for high schoolers, for teenagers, which is good. But, man, it just shows tobacco use and vaping amongst teens is on the decline. And I don't think people usually start using when they're adults. Some do, but I think it usually starts in the teenage years. So, um, but yeah, with broadcast TV, man, it's it's going to be revolutionized if you follow them. Like we've talked about with the ATSC 3.0, that is going to be really interesting. Next star will be when that happens, they'll be like the gatekeepers and potentially have like, you know, like the, the gatekeeper to the toll bridge. And we won't get into it here if, if, unless you guys want to. ATSC.3.0 is going to be like next generation TV. It's going to be not just you watching TV, but you can communicate on multiple TVs. It's over the air broadcast, like high def. Gamblers can do it. Like they can give you custom made. It, it's this whole world and it's going to be the next thing, but it might take a few years for Congress to get through and get that out going. But um, yeah, I, I don't believe broadcast is going anywhere. Like the local networks, what are we going to have? One one um, national news network? I don't think it's going to work like that. We all like our regional stuff, and that's kind of where Nexstar is just their bread and butter. So it's, it's you know, but like we said, dude, everything is under. Uh, Morgan Housel has been talking about trying to not think of what's going to change, but what's going to stay the same, like putting your money on the things that will remain the same. And that's very an, a very interesting thought. Rick picked up more Pfizer and, oh, 
Pfizer. That's an interesting one. I think I think they're having some problems, aren't they? I haven't really dug deep into them like uh, Darth or uh, Darth or that. Darth or that. I don't know. <laughs> Drake started a position in Mid America. Um, MAA, that's apartments, right? Is it Mid America Apartments? I don't know. MAA, I think it is. Ooh, Mark has a big dividend week coming up. I don't know if I do. Come on, everybody. <laughs> Let's go to the land of checking and seeing if I have any dividend payments coming up after we hide your comment because I don't want to block the screen. All right, let's see here if I have any dividend payments. Survey says we should do news. I know Steve's going to be on me about it. And here's where the fun begins. Let's go, Mr. Computer. <laughs> I'm like, please, everybody, the whole world's watching. They're going to leave. All right, uh, my portfolio, this is what I want to do. You know, sometimes it's weird. I don't know if you can see this, but it'll show 694 megabyte. Come on. Boy, the 28th is a long time. How many more Sundays? Two until then? So this is fun that we get to just look at this, right? All right. Way to go. Oh, there we go. It's co it's coming. This, this thing's like, hold on. Hold your horses. Uncommon, uncommon. Uh, we wanted to look at uh, income calendar. Oh, I do have some dividends. This is wrong, the $7 from Selenies, because the only problem is, is when I sell, even though it was after the ex-dividend date, this has reflected my post-sale. So it's going to be more than that. But I'll have 51 bucks. So there we go. I will have $50 from EPD and then ACI. I'm stubborn. I'm waiting. I think it's going to be like 27 and change if and when the merger goes through. And then a big day. Oh, yeah, this is probably what a lot of you got. So there we go. We've got uh, three, two payments from AbV, 35.25 from Maine, and then 40.70 from Realty Income. So that will be pretty nice. And since we're here, Steve, we will do for you. What day was Monday? Monday was, what, the 6th? Come on, grab. There was a lot here. I may have to let this load up. Hey, this is fun, right? <laughs> this is what I'm dealing with. This is why it's only a matter of time. We got the new MacBook. I wish I could get it here faster. But we're all about saving money. And, you know, this might be a good place to start with uh, – the worsening oh here we go something's something's happening let me close another window it's embarrassing really it, it's it's embarrassing but uh when was the eighth so we got to go to the sixth right i'm gonna give it one more second and then i don't know what are you guys talking about here let's see there you go you can uh I'll put something up while that's low. It ain't going to load. You some of daddy wants to swear. Oh, eight. There we go. ADP hike their dividend. There we go. Okay, everybody. Hopefully not too many of you left because we got some interesting stuff. Here we go. Emerson. We'll go quick on the dividend news here. This is just what Simply Safe put up. Emerson raised their dividend 1%. Pause the video if it's going too quick and you want to. Hasbro, they downgraded to 60, which. I shared the Baron Streetwise podcast. Jack Howe shared a very interesting, interesting idea about Hasbro. So I would take a gander on that in the beginning of the last one. I do like Baron Streetwise podcast. Pretty good. ADP raised their dividend 12%. Uh, they just recapped Chevron buying Hess. Cracker Barrel was downgraded to 40. Don't know what's going on there, but I... Would not feel comfortable investing. Atmos, ticker ATO, raised their dividend 8.8%. Look at that. Look at them go. That's their 40th consecutive increase. Owl Rock, there you go. There's Ryan's. I shared this with them. Grew their dividend 6.1%, plus they're giving another supplemental dividend. BD, BDX. Isn't that Beckton Dickinson? No. Is it? No, it's not. I don't remember. I've confused myself. Raise their dividend 4.4%, 52nd consecutive year, and they are a dividend 
that would be King. So they might have made a mistake. Uh, downgrade for Washington. Funding, uh, what is this? Washington Community Bank, ticker WASH. Roper, they raised that dividend 9 per 10%. They are a dividend king, I believe. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Thought that said Atari. I was like, sweet. They get a dividend downgrade for ATRI. Don't know what they do. Healthcare supplies. Let's see. OG and E. They got a dividend refreshing outlook. And then there we go. We made it. And then UGI got a dividend downgrade to 60. So there's some interesting things. That's your weekly news on our communion here for that. So there you go. So I got some dividends coming too. I'm getting to you guys. I'm almost caught up. I'm coming. I'm coming. What else? Who's getting big dividends this week? Tell me what you're getting. What's your biggest? Is it O? Is it Maine? Uh, Pat? What's up, Pat? Pat's buying T. Row in Maine. T. Row is interesting. That's one that we have to think of. There is a recession and a lot of assets under management. If people pull their money, they're going to have to sell. So that would be something to think about and look at. I don't own them outright. I do have exposure inside of SCHD, I do believe. Drake, the T-Rex guy balanced out his REITs. Oh, there it is. Dude, I love it. Just the financial degrees from Southern New Hampshire. Southern New Hampshire University. That is a, uh, I think that's a LOL at my guy here with his uh, his ad breaks. Hey, hey, you know, daddy's got to put food on the table. So don't never, ever knock a person for making some money unless they're, you know, uh, how do you say it? Hurting somebody against their, no. Um, oh, my God, brain fart. I used to have a fun thing to say. Unless you're hurting people or taking their stuff. But the caveat is some people do enjoy being hurt. So if that's the kind of stuff you're into, as long as it's consensual, okay. But yeah, uh, Disney on their earnings call, they did their CEO, who I guess is uh, Chapek, right? No. Eisner. Oh my, oh my God. I got 1990s Disney on the brain. Uh, it's not Michael Eisner because people were worried because talking to Warren, like, what if Michael Eisner leaves? Iger, Bob Iger, that's who it is, not Chapek. Bob Iger would have said that. And he told, recommended to the board that they start paying a dividend next year. We'll see if that happens. Hey, Dapper Frank, there he is, added General Mills and McDonald's to the Roth. General Mills, that's an interesting one. Hey, Harsha, what's up? Been a minute. Oh, Diwali. I'm not familiar with that. That's African, right? I don't know. What is Diwali? Let, let us know. African. Probably Indian, right? You got to forgive me. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying here. I'm struggling. I'm trying. But you did buy. Wait, lighting dye is okay. Paid for J&J, PG, SCHD, D uh, DGRO. Okay, that's an ETF. Nice. Best Buy. Trevon added Best Buy. I know, Ryan, we talked about Best Buy a while ago. Not never came of that. Morgan got that from Warren and Charlie. Oh, yeah, Ryan, you've been listening. To, are you listening to them all in order, too, like I have been? The same sentiment, their strategy. Yeah, and that's, dude, that's just one of the things that you got to do, and I love that. And it's kind of funny that Morgan Housel will never say anything that has never been said before. He just may say something in a different way. Look at it like, like Lego blocks. The Lego blocks exist, but some people may put them together in a way that hasn't been put together before. So that's kind of the cool thing. So you do have General Mills for a long time too. Harsha does. Selling covered calls on Intel. How much? Weak? Nice. I got to know, what are you doing? Because I have those 100 shares at like 40 and change and the premiums aren't that great. So how long out are, what's the duration that you're striking those uh, those at? And for those of you that don't know what it means, it's just options talk, covered calls, don't worry. Yeah, technology. And people kept asking them. I love it when you have the shareholders. 
And oh, dude, Ryan, if you're still watching, have you <laughs> have you gotten to the part with the uh, oh, who are they? The Native American. There was like a Native American tribe, and for a, like a couple of years there, it started to get out of hand. <laughs> like people would just come up and talk to, you know, they would wait in line, and uh, I think one of the Berkshire uh, electric utility subsidiaries had something to do with one of the rivers or one of the lakes. And, uh, like <laughs> people were having issues fishing. I shouldn't laugh about it, but it was just like, it, it just gets uncomfortable to hear them like talking to Warren and he would try to handle it nicely, but yeah, it, uh, let, let me know. <laughs> Buy more J and J probably me too. Uh, Okay, Teresa, thank you. We'll take it. I'm going to take it. I'm 45, you know, so uh, what movie did we just watch? We just watched, oh, The Wedding Singer. My kids had never seen it. And uh, Adam Sandler and his friend, Robbie's friend in there, the guy that drives the limo, he uh, he talked about, you know, being lonely because he's like, you know, I grew up idol idolizing like Fonz and Vinnie Barbarino, but you know what happened to them? They got canceled. Why did they get canceled? Because nobody wants to see 50-year-old guys hitting on chicks. <laughs> I was like, that's funny. I get it. It's cre It gets to a point where it's just cre It's like either sad or creepy or both. But, hey, I'll take it, you know. I'll take it. Roper's a dividend. <laughs> dividend. What's a dividend? I don't know. That sounds like something uh, Eminem would spit at you. A dividend champion. They have 31 years of consecutive increases, but they may not be large enough to be an aristocrat. Yeah, so to be an aristocrat, right, you have to be a member of the S&P 500, and I don't remember the other couple stipulations. I really should know. Hey, Katie, been a minute since when we've seen you, Katie. Uh, I don't – let me see. I think that they may have been dividend downgrade. Kevin, if you're still watching, Kevin – do you have um, – no, they have a safety score of 80. And this is interesting. Let's look at this, everybody. Good question, Katie. I'm almost caught up with you guys, so but we're going to look here and, and for Katie because she's so nice to ask. Well, we'll look at uh, – because it popped up. Make it bigger for the people with bad eyesight because they're old. <laughs> it's okay. We'll all be old someday. Either way. Dividend safety score of 80, 3.81% yield. I know they had been low. I know these are articles they'll do, they'll write about. Simply Safe is nice. I really enjoy it. It's expensive, but 6% uh, 20 year CAGR. They've been growing the dividend for 55 years, 146 years uninterrupted. They don't want to lose that streak, but I think we're going to get this. So the dividend went from 70 to 79, then to 80, then to 81. So we've had uh, two years of penny increases. Kind of taking the 3M playbook. I think they're going to do penny increases for the time being. And, yeah, that dividend yield is 92% above the five-year average. So, And it's been up there for quite some time. That's been in the middle of the 52-week range. So... Let's see, what was the big bugaboo? Yeah, so earnings, you see, 747% payout ratio, but free cash, only 65. Ryan and I were talking about this. I think it's okay because uh, the dividends paid out of the cash flow. So I think 65% is, uh, it's good. You know, a little bit higher than it normally is. And let's see, oh, earnings per share just fell off a cliff. Free cash flow was negative 13 bucks and 22. So those were some of the problems that they're recovering from. But look at next 12 months, they expect 830% earnings per share growth. Yeah, sales. Let me see their ROE. Buying back shares the last couple of years. Yeah, sales still trending in the right direction. Yeah, there it is. Oof. ROE and ROIC both falling off a cliff. But they got to recover, man. Get back up to those mid uh, mid to low teens. That's what we want to see. We'll just finish the rest of these. Uh, you can pause these and read them uh, in depth if you want to. But yeah, I've, all their margins have just been just compressed down, 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 down. Uh, net debt's been creeping up too. So yeah, margins margins compressing. Their debt has been increasing. Uh, interest coverage ratio eek, down to sixty three cents. 
Yikes. That's uh, that's low. So I will say that it looks to me like Swick, Stanley Black and Decker has some issues, but you know, if you believe in the company, it might be a good time to to jump into them. But um, yeah, I wouldn't buy them. I don't know if I own them in. Uh, I don't think they're in SCHD. Jim, nice man, you got six hundred bucks coming from AbV, one hundred forty from eight from EPD, a hundred from oh, okay, nice. Ooh, if I would buy a railroad stock, which one would it be? Good question. I think Union Pacific looks solid. Um, would any of you be interested? I've been thinking about a video because I've thought about the railroads. Super easy to understand business. Really easy. But kind of like, do you, do you guys remember how I did the uh, the foods, the snack foods? I compared like 14 of them. So I think I might do something similar. Maybe change a few of the you know columns and, and whatnot. But I think I might do that for the railroads. Uh, maybe that'll be the next video. It probably won't do well gangbusters wise, but it's something I would be interested in knowing and I would like to share it with you guys. So I think I might do that. Would you guys be interested in, in hearing that or seeing that? Years ago, what, could I summarize their common repeated words or advice? Yeah, it's pretty simple. Uh, invest in what you know. Uh, if you don't know how to value a business or research a business, buy an ETF. Like <laughs> don't diversification is admittance of ignorance, meaning that like why would you hold a hundred stocks if you have like five or six solid core holdings? Why would you not keep putting money into the best of the best businesses and just keep spreading it out amongst a hundred different stocks? So yeah, that's just them saying like you don't know what you're what you're because if you know how to invest in a business and value a business and you know what you're buying, you may be wrong, but you're gonna know exactly what you're buying. But if, if you don't know how to do that, then ETF it. So that's kind of it. Circle of competence. Um, they don't try to expand their circle of competence, you just wait, you know, sit in cash. They're they're heavy in cash right now, but actually they're not. I think. I heard that they're they're about on average from where they normally are. But you sit in cash, you wait, you don't have to invest. If you don't just wait for the right price to come. It's like Warren alludes it's a baseball and says you you stand at the plate all day long, all night long, pitch after pitch after pitch after pitch and you only swing when you see that big fat juicy pitch that you know you can knock out of the park. That's kind of what they summarize up. Um, and also Charlie says EBITDA is, uh, bullshit earnings and, uh, <laughs> and they have a few other fun things to say. Oh yeah. And, uh, most of what they teach in college is, uh, twaddle. And if Warren were to teach college, co college courses on investing in, in, and valuation, it would, uh, it wouldn't be no more than a week long. So that's kind of, uh, some of the qu quick summarization, Bill, Billy boy, Billy boys. Don't call me Billy boy. Texas Instruments looks nice. O and Apple, nice. I'm contributing to your Apple dividends. A which, by the way, I know some people give me crap. My, you know, I hear my brother-in-law is he's anti-Apple. I think somebody from Apple did something to him when he was a kid. I don't know, but he is just one anti-Apple man, and he's like those. You speak the name Apple around, he's like Apple Tui. So. Kevin, anyway, sorry, buddy. <laughs> Buying APD. I don't remember HESM. Main, Main Street Capital, nice. Texas Instruments and O are your dividends this week. You're not buying that. Those are your dividends. Good on you. I would just, honestly, I would take out a reverse mortgage. I would just, you know, open up as many credit cards as you legally can. Uh, invest in, you know, just, I would buy Tesla. I don't, I assume you're joking. And if you're not, I'd love to hear why you're uh, buying Tesla. Um, yeah, I don't, I think I'm not a fan of it. I think I'm skeptical. I'm not a fan of it. Cool. The Indian festival of lights. Nice. Thank you for clearing that up. Uh Oh, <laughs> dude, Charlie's the best. If you guys haven't listened to him on the acquired podcast, I recommend it. I think it's the one and only podcast he's ever done. Fantastic. You've got to listen to him. <clears throat> he's just old now. He's, uh, 
I like the time when he called Manish Pot. I think it was Manish. No. Oh, he called some investor insane. I don't remember. He does. He's almost ready to check out, so it's cool. He doesn't care. He does say a lot. Uh, just remind me where I'm. Or, the only thing he wants to know is where he's going to die, so he doesn't go there. Yeah, be selective in your investments and your life. Yeah, exactly. Very well said, Jim. Very, very well said. 85 shares J and J tomorrow. Yeah, I I like them. I think they have really good long term growth. Going to be some volatility in the short term, but J and J is just one of those brilliant companies. And now they don't have to worry on the consumer health, which was struggling and lagging. They're just you know. Uh, I think they have $25.1 billion annual revenue platforms right now uh, between the med tech and the pharmaceutical. They may be hurt a little bit by Stellara falling off that patent cliff, but uh, they've been preparing for it and they've got stuff in the pipeline too. I don't know how to analyze what they have in the pipeline. So that's kind of one of the, one of the, I don't know if I would call it, not in your circle of competence, but they just, all the pharmaceutical companies have their drugs in the pipeline and they they don't even know which ones are going to be the big blockbuster drugs. But when it happens, oh baby, when it happens, look at Eli Lilly with uh, Ozempic, right? Just haven't got the part with the Native Americans. Uh, it, it must be the early 2000s, but dude, you, <laughs> it gets to the point where you're like, oh my God, like there's some hecklers, but yeah, I can't. Somebody let me know if somebody's uh, got in the next 15 minutes as a quick hand. What is the the what was the uh, the whole hubbub about with the? Uh, I can't believe I forgot the name. I you know, uh, Diwali's the festival of light. So I thought is Hanukkah. We got festivals of lights here all over the crit the light. Anyway, the darkest day of the year is that already? No, it's not the darkest day of the year already, is it? Okay, cool. Victory of good over evil. And you've been selling Intel covered calls at 39 or 42 weeks out. Huh. Maybe I'll have to look into that tomorrow because I try to do one week, but two weeks out might be good. So you're right where I'm at too because I'm looking to go like 40 or 41, 40 or 41 dollars. I don't, I want to exit Intel, but I'm stubborn and I don't want to do it. I think my average is like 40. 40, 35 or 40, 73, something like that. So just, just round it up. We'll just call it 41 bucks is my, uh, my average with Intel. So I'm kind of looking to get out around 41 ish. Yeah. Hold across the board. Yeah. If you I, honestly, it could be an okay time to buy. Maybe we wait for Stanley Black and Decker to drop back into the low seventies. I do remember you, Kevin talking about Stanley Black and Decker yeah, a lot of headwinds, a lot of headwinds, especially if we hit that recession, like, right? It's the recession that never came. So if we hit that and spending, consumer spending dries up, I know there's not going to be a lot of remodeling, you know, things like that. If if Americans are tapped out with their credit and it could be, it could be, uh, could be a little bit uglier before it gets better, right? 20% below fair value. But yeah, fair value, that's just an it's just a guess. It's just somebody's best guess. Uh yeah, supply chain issues. Yeah, I never really dug deep into Stanley Black and Decker. A Milwaukee fan, but oh, oh, that's right. We talked about that. You're dating a roofer that uses DeWalt and Stanley Black and Decker owns DeWalt, right? Honestly, you know what it is, Katie? My employer pays for our power tools, so <laughs> I'm not going to complain because uh, years ago uh, where I used to work, where they used to pay you in cash and a gun on the table, we had to pay, we had to use our own, uh, our own power tools. So, Hey, you know, my, my employer pays for the Milwaukee tools. So <laughs> I, I joke, I joke. I was never worked anywhere where I was paid in cash and a gun on the table that I can remember. Dividends. Oh, is that, Oh, he's talking to Jim. Okay, I'll let you guys talk that out. I want to get to more questions and caught up. Uh, do you share somewhere for your viewers that have you total dividends received from all your holdings? Yes, I do. In my newsletter, in the weekly newsletter, I have a little section and I show the dividends received for the week and then the total dividends received for the year. And I don't know if I can bring it up in the background. Maybe instead of, was that Rush? 
uh, song, Show Me, Don't Tell Me. Let me, while you guys are talking, I'm going to, in the background here, pull up my newsletter on ConvertKit and show you exactly what I am talking about <laughs> as I talk like this while I'm typing, pulling this up. Okay, I'm about ready to share, review the content, and now I will share with you where it looks like. On the screen, I want to do like Ian Lopa coming at you on the screen right, right now. All right, so here you go. This is uh, this is a little bit behind the scenes of the of the newsletter. What it looks like. Uh, I use ConvertKit, but we'll go down, down, down. I I got the little thing I do, and so here, come on, here we go. This is what it looks like. Dividends received this week, zero zip zilch. Uh, dividends received year to date, 5,511.15. And then this is from Schwab. This is a little cutout I update every week. And you can see the dividends I've received, a little bit of interest, and then the remaining dividends for the rest of the year. So that's what that looks like. And then, yeah, and then for all those who's watching, I do the uh, stop, what we sold, what we bought. Uh, I, I just put, I'd like to put maybe five to 10 notable stocks that are going X dividend in the coming week and the date. So remember, if you see 1114, you got to own Kroger by 1113 market close, the way I look at it, to qualify for the next dividend. Um, and I, you know, pimp one of my latest videos, uh, a couple podcasts. So right there, the link to the, the Baron Streetwise podcast I was talking about. Uh, I'll put another couple. Um, you know, a couple newsletter, got Ryan on there, a couple others uh, in the network, and then uh, end it with a random music video that I like. So that one was uh, Rocket Queen by Guns N' Roses. So never know what you're going to get. It was a toss-up between Rocket Queen and uh, Candy by Cameo. Shout out if anybody actually knows Candy by Cameo. That's going back a little bit. They did uh, Word Up was one of their big ones. So the railroads. Hey, hey, good. I'm going to do that because I would like to consolidate into a railroad. So I think that'll be the video come out. You know, I might be able to get it done before Saturday, but I think I'll compare all the rail, <laughs> all the railroads and yeah, CNI, Canadian Pacific, Greg, Mark, good, good ones. Those will be on there. So that's it. And this is the thing, you know, Ryan and I have talked about this where sometimes I feel like Every video, because it gets the most engagement, is just like, you know, three cheap stocks to buy now, five cheap stocks. These stocks are insane. Che you could do that like one video a day, I, you know, and I'm like, it gets, for us, it can get boring, but um, I'll do one a month, maybe try to do like a 10 cheap stocks or something like that. Just give you guys some ideas. But yeah, we, um, uh, I like doing stuff like that, like very helpful. If you would think of investing in a railroad, like stuff I would look at on a spreadsheet to try and help me make up my mind can be helpful for you as well. And I think we'll become better dividend investors together with that information. So, hey, the, the cheap stock videos have a time and a place. So kind of a funny, uh, funny thing. Buffett says that statements by Munger are the reasons why they won't let him. Write the report. I believe it, man. He would be just too, yeah. Am I walking to 200? No, I'm sitting in a chair. If I I can't stand up on the I don't I'm not set up for it. I like Ryan's setup though. I dude, I get enough. I was raking today. I'm so sore. I'm tired of who rakes. I'm still raking because I'm cheap. My wife's like, you know, oh here. The neighbor pays like $250 and they cut their grass and rake all year. And I'm like, $250. So I do it. But cutting the grass, you know why? pop the earbuds in. I read audiobooks. I listen to investing podcasts. So I kind of feel like I'm getting exercise and a bit of an education when I do the yard work and save a few bucks. So it's, you know, it's not just totally being um, that cheap. First day of winter. Oh, that's right. Dude, uh, you reminded me. For those of you that don't know, and duh, that's why some people say that religions with the, the dying and rising God are then the shortest day of the year. And I think the sun is low for about three days. Get it? The sun, the S-U-N, the S-O-N, you know, take what you will. And then right around Christmas, 
time, like Christmas Day, is when the new year starts, like the rebirth happens when the days start getting longer. So it's like the year is born right around Christmas. So Christmas Day, anything. I think that's how it goes. Something like that. You know, we're not going to give a theology lesson here, but oh, CP does really well. We'll, we'll find <laughs> what was that? I wanted to say, well, we'll find out. And I almost did the uh, whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, Larry Moe and Curly. Check out SMH for chips. Maybe we're running late now, but sorry, it looks weird. Now when I'm reading this, I could see me looking up. Yeah. Anyway, SMH. I don't remember SMH off the top of my head. Okay, shortest day of the year. Oh, big companies. Dude, Target and Walmart. Target and Walmart have earnings this week, right? So that's going to be really interesting. Um, I usually blow through like uh, Seeking Alpha, I think, has the what's on tap this week. Really nice e uh, email. What to expect this week, I think it's called. I usually blow through that and I, I didn't, but I did catch uh, I did catch that. Reading B&O Pacific and Pennsylvania. Yeah, I'll put a bunch. I'll put the most, not, on, not the biggest, just I'll look. I'm not now you guys got me going. This is what it'll be. So expect the next video will be all about the railroads because you know, think about what's gonna stay the same. Even if I think the railroads are gonna be with us for a long time, and it's hard to start a new railroad company. How would you just do that from scratch? <laughs> Dude, my kids like Thomas the tank engine when they were small. Thomas the Choo Choo. Come on, Greg, get it right. Thomas the Tank Engine. You got Percy. He was the green one. You had Gordon. He was the one that was always angry. Uh, George Carlin was the uh, took over for Ringo Starr at one point. Yeah. I know people are like, wow, this guy knows a lot about Thomas the Tank Engine. Either he's a big creep or he's got kids. Thankfully, I have kids. I'm not dressing up like Thomas the Tank Tank Engine. Nobody's pulling trains around here. <laughs> we'll let that one go. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Monopoly Railroads, right, right, right. <clears throat> oh, dude, yeah. I forgot it. I think I don't remember what percentage of Pepsi's revenue is tied to Walmart, but it's a big amount. It's a big amount. <laughs> Playing Monopoly or asking your boy, yeah, legit questions. I don't. I miss. I missed that. Was what did Rick ask? Oh, oh my God! <laughs> I can't believe I missed that. You're right. Those are indeed Monopoly. Real, <laughs> yeah. It did sound familiar for a second there, but my brain was totally not on that man. So I love it, dude. Touche. Buy the Monopoly index. I love it. Dude, on this channel, I love stuff like that. You snuck one by me. I love it. If I was a goalie, that one went five hole, slipped the wickets is what you did. I love it. And it was very apropos. Very apropos. I love that, man. That's great. Dude, bus balls. Dude, I was in the Navy. You know, we'll keep it PG mostly here. When I'll work in innuendo when I can. But... <laughs> I love it, dude. I, I swear to God, I look forward to this every week. I have such a good time. And don't don't get too high. Don't get too low when the week happens. Uh, I'll, I, I want to tell you guys this, that you don't know what's going to happen. Nobody knows what's going to happen. And that's what makes life, investing, sports, relationships, things with our kids, our family. It may, it's what makes everything so, so damn interesting. And just like you know, you you didn't know that I was going to, you had no idea that I was going to do a chair spin right there. I didn't know I was going to do a chair spin right, but I did. And that's just life, dude. We have the numbers. We have what's in the financial statements, the accounting numbers, but we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. That's the most important information is tomorrow's numbers, but we don't have those today. So we all have opinions, right? Yeah, and dude, that's why I did it. I did it for you. I did the goalie reference for you, Buckman. I love that. And yeah, so sign up for the newsletter. If you guys want to keep track, um, you can just type in dapperdividends.com right now. I think uh, I copy and paste every week the uh, the description after the 
little blurb at the top. So if you want to just go to dapperdividends.com, um, you can sign up for the newsletter there. You get a pop up with some other ones that might be um, might be nice as well. And yeah, I really do thank you and appreciate all of you. We always have Pee Wee take us out. Why? Because I'm a kid from the 80s. I grew up watching Pee Wee and I love that music. It just was kind of a nice little bow and always made me want to come back and see Pee Wee next week. So I will see you next week. And I really do. Um, I really do appreciate you, all of you sticking around and watching this. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. So I'll see you next week for our weekly communion. So long, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.